Hello everybody, welcome to another very exciting tutorial. Today we're going to be building this cool animation over here only using HTML and CSS. So as you can see we have uh, six boxes here with different colors and you have this kind of cool animation, flipping animation. You can use it as a loader, you can use the techniques that you learn for example in this tutorial for any other animation that you like to do. So let's get started. I'm going to start with the fresh copy of uh, the code nest editor here. What I'm going to do uh, in order to center that I usually like create a container uh, element here that I can absolutely position it in the center of the page. And then we had six boxes. So I create a um, box class multiplied by six and the editor automatically creates six divs with the class box. Now in the uh, sort of CSS part of it, uh, I need to center the container first and foremost. So I do container, uh, then I, I do left 50%. Uh, I use the same thing for the top 50%. And then uh, I definitely position it to be absolute so that it can freely move in the page and then transform and translate minus 50% and minus 50%, right? That's how we center the element. So if I do background red, for example, here, and then give it the width of maybe 10 pixel and height of 10 pixel, you'll see that it actually centers this container uh, over the in the middle of the page. So I'm just gonna remove this for now. The next thing we wanna do, we wanna style our box. Uh, so to be able to do that, I will define a width of 60% and then I do a height of 100 pixel. That's kind of representation of my sort of box. Uh, and then I give it a background of red. Not forgetting that I'm actually styling not the container, but the class box. Now you can see that since we had six boxes, we now have six boxes, one after the other in the page. And the only thing I can do here is to set the position to be absolute so that they end up uh, being one after the other. So if I do absolute here, now you can see that uh, they end up one after the other. And as you can see in this video, they actually transform, like they rotate and translate from the center of each card, uh, which is the uh, which is the actual uh, origin of default sort of transform origin of an object. Uh, so I don't need to change anything here. Um, here, going back to our code, the next thing we want to do, we want to change the colors, and also since they are absolute, the Z index of uh, each of the elements based on the color that the, we want to be in front, for example. So I can basically go here and define container, then I do box, but I choose the you know first box, so I do nf child one. So that would uh, basically select the first one. I will give it a background color of, let's say, uh, FFEA4B. Uh, and since this is the first element, it's not going to show up here. But if I change the Z index to 6, for example, here, you will see that it comes in front because uh, based on this order that we have over here, we are styling this one, which is the first in this element, uh, in this box elements. So it ends up being the last one. So we don't see it. So if I change the Z index to six, uh, then it will show up. So the next, the next one, I can, I can just copy this six times or five times more, one, two, three, four, five, and then change these to two, three, four, five, and then six, and then um, respectively change the Z index, five, four, three, two, one, and style and put the color that I want. For example, uh, in this case, what I want to do, uh, I want to the second color to be FBD one. 8a and these colors you can use whatever you want obviously um, ec uh, 93 
and then 5b is going to be the color of this one then the other one i'm just i'm just putting the colors that i uh, wanted to use here so uh, you can definitely choose a different color c21 c44 i want to make sure that these have diff completely different colors so that you can actually see the animation correctly and then i can do 69 and this is the last one we don't see any of them but this one because it has the highest z index right the next, the next portion of it, which is like the last one and an easy one, is to define our animation. So I'm just going to maybe add a little bit here so that we can see these keyframes animation that I create. So initially, if you look at this animation, it stops here for a moment, then it does do some, you know, transforms and then comes back here and stays here for a while, right? So in order to achieve that, what I can do is on the 0%, I say I don't want to do anything. But on 20%, uh, so basically I'm, I'm putting some sort of a delay over here. So I can say now on 20%, I want the transform to be translate. I want it to go 80 pixel uh, on the X axis. And also I want to make sure that it rotates 90 degrees. So let's put 90 degree over here. If I already go ahead and add this as an animation for these uh, uh, for, for these elements over here, uh, I can see the animation. But since I have six elements here and I want to apply the same animation to them, I can go ahead and add that animation you know, on each of these. But here I'm going to use SCSS again, as, as discussed in the previous tutorials. So I'm going to use SCSS because this gives me some you know, language constructs like for loops and ifs that I can apply to my code to make it easier. So I can just define animation here and say move, that's the animation I created, two seconds, I want to have it ease out, as, and then infinite, right? So you can see that so far, we have this kind of animation over here. Obviously, I can define some sort of a border radius for the box to make it a little bit nicer, so let's say three pixels. Now, all of those have like a border radius of three pixel, just like that. The next step I want to do, I want to add a delay, right? So that each one comes a little bit after the other one. And I can use SCSS for this. So I can use a for loop here and I can say, okay, I define a variable called i from one, since I know I have six boxes. And then here I just select each of them using this selector. I would say just nth child. Uh, and then here I can just say, you know, hash mark and then basically passing my i over here, which is going to be one through six. And then here I just define an animation delay. So I just say animation delay. I want it to be maybe 0 0.05 seconds uh, between each transition. And then I multiply it by i, right? Uh, I need to make sure that I do parentheses over here, for example, uh, so that the animation actually works correctly. So I have an animation delay, which is going to be like this. So now you can see that we have this cool delay between the animate, which is the same animation that we applied on all the boxes, but we added delay for each of those boxes so we can get this animation. So going forward, what I want to do, I want to complete the sort of keyframe animation that I created over here. So the next step is that I'm at 40% of the time of my animation, I want to just change the transform. This time I want it to translate to minus 80 pixel. So coming on the negative part of the uh, x-axis, and I also want to actually rotate it 270 degrees, right? So as you can see now, you get this cool animation. So it goes a translate of 80 and rotate of 90, and then it comes here with a rotate of uh, 270 degrees. So it already had 90 degrees, so it adds another 180 degrees. That's, that's why you will see that it actually aligns vertically like that. Finally, what I want to do on 60%, I just want to transform, rotate it to 360 degree and this basically goes to the same place as it was right just like that 
you can see you can get a lot of cool animations but to, for, for showing the default one on 100% of the animation I just want to preserve this rotation up here so now you can see that you can easily create such a cool animation only by using uh, CSS and I use SCSS preprocessor just for the simplicity purposes here. I could have like basically calculated this delay and put it on each of these, you know, class selectors, but I found it more easy to be able to do this on the box using this kind of selector. So I hope you like this tutorial. Please like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to our channel if you liked it and spread the word so that a lot of people can actually use these contents. Enjoy your rest of the day and see you next time. Goodbye.